Let me take you back. The Taken King, a time where a god made his mark in destiny. After we killed his lost sector's son, Oryx was coming to try to take us out for good. Oryx came with a few things like... But a few truly stood out. We've already spoken about the touch of malice, the no time to explain, and the black spindle. But now it's time to talk about three exotics that all share in weapon type, but that change the way we play Destiny. These three exotics, one with the power of thunder, another fire, and the final void, all held a special place in Destiny. That's right, we are going to talk about the Bolt Caster, Dark Drinker, and Raise Lighter Swords. You may have heard these come up in conversation with a friend, but that's because they were all extremely unique and all extremely powerful. Each one of these swords also served a major purpose, and each one of these swords have been brought back officially in Destiny 2, with some of them coming back in the Season of Arrivals. So I think it's time we finally talk about these swords, the exotic swords that shook the entire Destiny community. Here we go. Some footage in this video is from players around the community. Their links will be in the description of this video, as well as the music too. Nostalgic merch is still selling. Get it while it lasts. Gamer subs 10% off code Evan at checkout for keto-friendly, diabetic-friendly, healthy alternative to energy drinks. Like and subscribe and catch a Twitch stream if you enjoy. Welcome to the date that would change Destiny forever, September 15th, 2015, The Taken King. This DLC came with many changes like the leveling system, even though I like the old one better, actual story content, loads of strikes, crucible maps, exotics, a brand new raid bigger than any we have ever had until Last Wish and Forsaken, plenty of secrets, and a story boss that would culminate into a raid boss. This is what a DLC is all about, and like we talked about in the Crota video, this is what Destiny 1 off the bat was supposed to be. Let's focus on the story content for a moment though. After Oryx defeated Queen Mara Sav, we go and investigate Phobos for intel on what is going on, and we see Cabal fleeing from something dangerous, something mysterious, and something new to Destiny. The Taken had invaded. Speeding a little ahead, once we have returned, we sneak into Oryx's Dreadnought around Saturn with a stealth drive and go to take the fight against the Taken King. When we arrive at the portal to fight him though, we can't go through as we're not Ascendant like the Hive. Eris Morn then tells us how to become an Ascendant Hive. It's gone. I think Oryx just took an ogre. Not even Oryx can control an ogre, unless it's taken. So we go to the soul of Crota and use Cade 6s stealth tech to infiltrate the temple of Crota with those loud footsteps. I feel like Jesus dude, oh when you get close. So loud. <laughs> my, my ears, dude! I don't remember this mission being so loud, bro. <laughs> The stealth would eventually fail, and Eris makes noises and poofs us out. Guardian, come on, we me. Oh, 
Skipping further ahead, with enough to become Ascendant, we arrive at Oryx's throne room with the best entrance of all time to stop Oryx in a pretty solid fight. The altar of Oryx. This dude is no joke. I'm about to kill him so quick, though. Oryx did not die, but he did leave his sword on the ground, and Eris, using her space magic, pulled out the crystal inside for us to use. It was time for us to take Eris's rock off our map and start this quest. It's time to get in depth on how this quest worked and how truthfully grindy this quest was. To even start the quest, you had to complete the story, complete patrols around the Dreadnought, get 25 Hadium Flakes, which were a rare material in the Dreadnought, and only one was collected at a time. So run the farm circle for an hour or two, or just explore and eventually get the 25 after a few days. After obtaining a legendary sword and infusing it to 280 light level, the quest could begin and a sword of your choice, Arc, Void, or Solar could be chosen. Let's just assume you chose Void for the sake of this video, but all the swords followed the same step until a little later down the line. The first step was to kill 50 majors and 25 sword kills in the Crucible. The 25 was annoying as hell and would take some serious time to get done but that was worth the grind. Just trust me on that one. Once that was done, after a few days, the next step was to kill a knight in the Dreadnought. Ekstar. Ektar? Hector? Ector? Sword of Oryx. To even get there, you had to kill the three wardens blocking the door within a few seconds of each other, or it was back to orbit to start over again. After you got the door opened, Heather stood at the bottom with a shield that only your sword could take off. Then it was time to kill. Once you return to Shax, the fun begins, as he will give you the quest to gather 10 of a rare material. Ho ho ho! This is the fun part of the quest! Arc swords were going to need to collect spin metal on the Cosmodrome. Solar swords needed helium filaments on the moon, and void swords needed relic iron on Mars. So... 10 of them? Nope! How about RNG hundreds of them? Good luck and have fun, buddy. I'll see you in the next video. Mm. Nah, but for real, this is where days and days of grinding was going to take place. Unless you knew the routes from being a year one player back when you needed to know them to level up weapons, you were going to struggle here. Also, you needed void ability kills. Hope you didn't choose Titan here as you were going to need a ton of them to get to the next step. Once finally done, after years of farming, you needed to wait until Wednesday reset, or in Destiny 1 days, Arms Day. This is when the gunsmith would refresh with weapons and in this case, your sword upgrades were to come in. Now that you spoke to the gunsmith, the final step was to do the Sunless Cell Strike in a much harder special version and kill your warden in the boss room, then the boss, the Dark Blade, within 30 seconds of each other. So since we have a Void Sword for example, you would need to kill the Void Warden, then a la cool, the Dark Blade. Now that that is done, go and claim your sword. You have done it. After all those steps, you have acquired the ultimate power fantasy exotic. The exotic sword, dark drinker, or rays lighter, or bolt caster, depending on which one you chose at the beginning. Let's start with bolt caster, which was arc, and could throw circles of electricity at an enemy from a distance. This one was situational and was the weakest out of the bunch, but definitely was an option for arc burn activities and was really fun in Crucible as the tracking was insane on this thing. Ray's Lighter was up next with the ability to charge full speed dragging the blade through the ground sparking a fire against it in an uppercut that dealt massive single target damage. This was the one I used a ton in Destiny 1, and it was just a massive DPS weapon and was great for a lot of endgame content. Finally, we have the sword that everyone is the most excited about, 
Dark Drinker. This sword did it all. It created a pool of damage around it and was great for taking out groups of enemies as you whirled around casting void to everything in near sight. Dark Drinker was also a great option for single target DPS and became a staple of damage for Axis as you could hit multiple legs with one swing. Each of these swords was unique from the other and I think they were perfect for serving their purpose. But to add on, they were the only swords that could even do a heavy attack as legendary versions of each of them could not even do a heavy attack and to me this led to that power fantasy of them even more. Just had to grind them out individually. MORE MATERIAL FARMING BABY! Overall, these weapons not only caused everyone to love them, but shook everyone who obtained them too. Everyone was looking for that power fantasy that Gallahorn provided, and was used to gliding and shooting a rocket down into a group, but now we could just get in everything's face and destroy them hand to hand. A massive change that shook the whole community. So those are the exotic swords from Destiny 1. But did they return to Destiny 2? Well, I mean, you're still watching and we, we still got more videos. So yeah, I, I, I think they did. Destiny 2's opening mission got everyone excited at the idea that these exotic swords could be returning as Lord Shax even had Ray's Lighter on his back in the opening mission. But alas, no sword returned for a long time. That is, except Dark Drinker and Ray's Lighter in a way. Ray's Lighter's animation was now attached to almost every sword in the game as swords now came with a heavy attack naturally. To me at the time, this hurt the legacy of Ray's Lighter, but nowadays I think it's completely fine. Just makes it a little less special than having an exotic. Dark Drinker would return in a way in the World Line Zero with a dash and spin to clear adds and do heaps of damage, but World Line would see a much larger use than initially intended. We have not made one, but two videos on the topic of World Line, so be sure to check those out. But yeah, the World Line would fill the place for a while, but not the power fantasy that Dark Drinker provided, and it wasn't the same amazing animation Dark Drinker had before it. So we waited, and we waited, and waited, until the season of arrivals, when Dark Drinker and Boltcaster would return in the form of Temptation's Hook for Boltcaster and the Falling Guillotine for Dark Drinker. These came back as legendaries, not exotic swords that shared the same animations but could now have random roles and mods attached to them. Oh my. Having these weapons has made for some amazing fun and with the proper builds can be just as powerful or even more powerful as of this season, the season of arrivals. This is how we bring weapons back, provide the power and ways to make it even better. New looks, new name, same ability that we all loved. To be honest with you, this is what I want to see out of more remade weapons. Instead of weapons like Truth or Bad Juju where they come back in a worse state than they were. I want weapons like this, where they come back even stronger and they have a new nuance to them that adds a different level of gameplay. This is great. Good job, Bungie. So those are the three legendary swords turned exotic, now legendary again, and the steps to get there. I don't know what else to really even say. These swords shook the entire Destiny community, and now that they are back in all their glory, it's hopefully time we can get even more amazing and unique swords in the games like the Menagerie swords that came before. I guess only time will tell. But if you did enjoy this video, a like would be greatly appreciated as well as a subscription. Come by the Twitch streams at EvanF1997 or follow me on Twitter and join my Discord server. Anyway guys, until next time, enjoy the bloopers and have a great day. I'll see you in the next video. Mm. Come back, come back, come back.
Do the whale again. I plant this blade in the name of my father. Oh, f <laughs> <laughs> Rip your father, dude. It's level seven. Oh, I fail. I love him. Oh, wait, it worked. He still launched it? What? He's turning sight. I can't see your eyeballs. Where are you looking? Solar Titan. Frontal Assault on Titan as well. Anything like that. Nice pirouette. Kill him! No! Yeah! <laughs> Thank you, dude! Bagging. <laughs>